y'all, Coach and Fight here. We can ready to go into similar to nine, part four. Yep, part four. In this section, we're going to find out about how the tower is built. We will find out about the foundations of the tower and the stones that are put in the tower. We're going to find out about these stones. We're going to find out how some of them come from the mountains and some of them come from the plains. We're also going to find out about how, how the Messiah is going to strike these stones. Yeah, here we're waiting for the Messiah to come. He shows up and he's about to examine the stones that's in the tower in this section. He's about to uh, take some out, leave some, go get some. A lot of things are happening in this section. And we're going to find out all about, we're going to find out the details on this information. What does it mean to be struck by the tower? We're going to give some real life examples on how it played out in our life as an example. Yeah, it's a real life story for us. Uh, this section covers a lot of things that happen in our life and are still happening today. Yeah, so we're going to learn a lot in this section. So you guys uh, stick around. We're going to make this a little bit longer class as we try to get through this whole section of this book we're going to take out a big chunk of it today what verse do we go through verse 64 yeah so we start off at verse 40 so we're going to cover about 24 verses in this one as we you know like i said we're going to do it like an ant would eat an, an elephant biting all big chunks at a time um so y'all stick around with us and and hope you learned something go ahead and hit that like button hit the subscribe button and comment and be prepared to comment comment as you go <laughs> Hey y'all, Coaching the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hello everybody. We are up to what, part four of this little series on uh, Similitudes 9? Part four, yeah, Similitudes 9. Well, let's jump on in to verse 40. Number 40. So the building that day was done, howbeit the tower was not finished, for it was afterwards to be built. Therefore, now also there was some delay made of it. Yeah, so what have we put in the tower so far? We've laid the foundation to the tower. And we've added some of the stones. We've added some of the stones into the tower, but um, it's not finished yet. This has the chronology in it. It talked about how after the Messiah was put in that tomb, that he went in and got some of these stones and brought them up. The first four foundations were brought up and put into the tower. And then he went to the mountains and got some of the stones and put those into the tower as well. And we're going to find out here in a little while that he's going to start bringing, bringing uh, stones from the plains. Is that right? Yeah, it would seem fitting that the our forefathers, um, the ones from the beginning, would be the foundation. It is where we got our start from. So he yeah. went into the deep and got them, and now they're the foundation for our for the tower. And now the stones, which were the prophets, the disciples, uh, and now the patriarchs. Yeah, now and... we're getting ready to uh, talk more about the uh 12 mountains yeah he's going to give a lot of detail on you know how these people were put into the tower what they had to go through and such things like that it's a lot of detail in this book let's go on to verse 41 41 and these six men commanded those that built to depart and as it were to rest for some time but they ordered those virgins that they should not depart from the tower so now they seem to me to be left for the guarding of it. So there was a break in the building. After the foundations were laid, um, there was a break in the tower. Now, from what I gather from this, this is talking about this period of time from the time that the Messiah went back and got the first four foundations and laid those until a more present time there was a break in the period maybe this was the church age that we've gone through but there was no building of the tower during this point and he's telling the 12 virgins to stand guard over the tower and you remember who the 12 virgins are yeah the 12 virgins just to catch us back up are uh, faith countenance power patience simplicity innocent chastity cheerfulness truth understanding concord and charity check this out you didn't see this on the screen okay. she's reading from the book <laughs> okay what this is is a comparison of four different translations you have the William Wake translation you have a translation from a guy named Donaldson a translation from a guy named Lightfoot and this last translation is from that audiobook over there on YouTube 
Oh, wow. Yeah, and you see how most of the words are the same, but there, there are slight differences in some of the words here. All right, on what they mean. And like I said, you have to look these words up in a dictionary to get an um, understanding of them. And I started doing the same thing for the other women, too. To, these are the, the 12 negative uh, women here. And so you can compare uh, who they are. Remember, they are equal and opposite. And you can maybe get a better understanding of who the good ones are when you start to compare their opposites over here. And then, But I have to go in and get the other three translations and add. That's what I was doing. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's very helpful. All right. So we're ready to go on? Yeah. You had said something about uh, very interesting that I didn't put to, two and two together about how uh, they were guarding the tower as to make sure that none of the, uh, the people within the tower escape. Or... Yeah, because you remember in the story that some of the people over time will will backslide. Yeah, they'll look at the, the 12 negative women and their beauty associated with those negative women and then they will start to 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 go back that way. Mm -hmm. And anybody who does that is going to, you know, be excluded from the tower. And so what he's doing over here, he's telling these 12 virgins to stay in guard and make sure that nothing happens to the people that's already in the tower. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so they're, they're left sense. there to protect them. 42? Yeah. When all were departed, I said unto the shepherd, Sir, why is it not the building of the tower finished? Because it cannot, said he, be finished until its Lord comes and approves of the building. That if he shall find any stones in it that are not good, they may be changed. For this tower is built according to his will. Now you're talking about the second coming of Christ. You're talking about the second coming of the Messiah here in verse 22. He's saying, okay, this tower has, is starting to be built, but it's not going to be finished until the second coming of Yehoshua HaMashiach comes and inspects the stones that are in this tower and makes sure that it's ready for the tribulation and ready to go forward. I just love it how the, the entire Bible from the beginning all the way to the end and even the books that they were taking out, all of it points back to the Messiah. Yeah. Every word of it points back to the Messiah. Well, you remember who he is. He is the word made flesh. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so when you think about it like that, he is the, he is the Bible. He is the scripture. He is. He was a walking scripture, walking Bible. I hate to say Bible all the time because right. people think about the 66 books. But when you think about all of Scripture, he was a representative of all Scripture, even the Scripture that was written after he was put in the grave. Mm -hmm. The Gospels and, you know, even in all of the New Testament was written after, after he was gone. But he was still a representation of that. So he was a representation of past, present, and future texts. Right. Yep. That makes so much sense. 43. Sir said I... I would know what the building of this tower signifies, as also I would be informed concerning this rock and this gate. All right, so now he's about to get into the details of this thing. He's going to start breaking down who and what is actually going on here. If you remember what we've learned in the story so far, Hermes is basically seeing a vision kind of thing. He, he doesn't understand what's going on. All he's really noticed is, you know, these mountains and this plain and this rock that's coming out of it and these angelic like figures running around with these 12 virgins. But he really has no clue as to what's going on at this point. Right. Okay. So now he's going to start getting some details. Okay. Number 44. And concerning the mountains and the virgins and the stones that did rise out of the deep and were not cut but put into the building just as they came forth. And why the ten stones were laid in the foundation, then the twenty-five, then thirty-five, then forty. Yeah, he wants to, he, Hermes is remembering all of this. And we find out when you, when you, when you read like the third uh, section of the part of visions, when, when the church, when the lady is talking to him, she tells Hermes, she says, you're not as advanced as other people. There are other people who are further along than you who should have this information. But Hermes, the father has ordered that we give you this information so that you can write this book for the elect of God. And that's who this information is for, is for the elect. Right. Because it is these guys who was actually going to carry humanity through the tribulation. And I was thinking about that earlier, how, you know, the father has set this thing up. You know, that, you know, we, we learned that the church was here before the beginning of time. But yet here it is late in the game and we're still building the church. And I was, you know, and what it boils down to is, OK, 
Sure, there may be 7 billion people walking around today and there's probably trillions or zillions of souls and spirits that have existed on the planet and, you know, dwelling in the spirit world now. Um, but it is after the tribulation, there's only going to be a, a very select few, a very few people that's actually going to go forward um, who represents the church, who represents this tower, these people in this tower. But when you when you think about it, okay, and, and how is this working? So the tribulation is going to purify the earth. Only those who love the Father, love the Word, and are you know full of righteousness will 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 survive. But the people who are, who are in the spirit world now and who is going to you know perish during the tribulation will be reincarnated into the children of the people that survived the tribulation. And when they do come back, they will be too full of righteousness, full of holiness. There will be no more evil or sickness on the planet whatsoever. And so that's then what will be the actual church. That makes any sense? I don't know. Yeah, um, I was thinking about when you was, you was talking about that, how, you know, we hear about the father has, quote unquote, no respect to a person. But he does. He, he really does because, um, you know, that 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 word is taken out of context because you know he has the 144 he chose you know um um the children of israel he has so he does have respect to a person um and i say that to say that only so only certain people are going to be chosen oh. to to only certain people are, are chosen to be put into this tower well. Yeah. Does that make any sense? You have the chosen, but you, you remember the chosen have to make their their calling and election sure. So there will be people who are chosen who are not elected. There will be people who, who will be called who are not going to make it into the end. And that's what it's talking about when he has no respect of persons. Even though they have a calling on their life, still have to stand up, still have to do what's right. And, and it, one for four or not. If they decide that they're going to break his commandments and break his rules, they're going to get kicked out of the tower. And this is what we're about to see about how the Lord of the Towers is getting ready to start uh, knocking people out. I guess. Yeah. Well. Say. Yeah. He's going to. He's going to. He's, so he's going to try them and make sure that they're really truly ready. Okay. Forty-six. And he said unto me, If thou shalt not be dull, thou shalt know all. And shall see all the other things that are about to happen in this tower. And shall understand diligently all these similitudes. Yeah, he's going to make them understand it. And remember in the last part, he said, don't try to figure everything out. Understand those things that you understand now. And what I would suggest is just come back and read it later on. That's what I had to do. It took me over a period of years. You know, I read it one year and came back and, and, and maybe a couple of years later and read it again. And I got a whole lot more information out of it. So. Yeah, in commands, at the beginning of the introduction of commands, he tells uh, Hermes to tell the people to keep reading it over and over again so it get into their memory. Yeah. yeah, you have to read it a lot. This is a very, 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 very complex book. 47. And after a few days, we came into the same place where we had sat before. And he said unto me, let us go unto the tower, for the Lord of it will come and examine it. Now, these few days, whenever he say few days, he's talking about a few de a few years. Now, to Hermes, it was only a couple of days. But for us, we're all a, a sort of a Hermes. We're all going through this, so we're all like Hermes. And for us, these two days are actually going to be two years before, you know, before this happens. So when he speaks of examining it, he's talking about judgment? Um... Not judgment day, not the big J judgment, but it's going to be a kind of judgment where it's going to, going to go in and inspect these different these different stones. Yeah. Okay. Remember, this is the angel of repentance who is talking to Hermes here, and it is the angel of repentance or Uriel who's responsible for the building of this tower. And so Uriel is like, hey, we need to go in and make sure this tower is correct before before uh, the, before the Messiah comes back. Forty eight. So we came thither and found none but those virgins there. And he asked them whether the Lord of the tower was come thither. And they said, and they replied that he would be there presently 
to examine the building. Yeah. So now we were just talking about this a few minutes ago, how, you know, the children of the, the father seem to be separated, seem like, you know, they have no family or friends or associates, you know, around them anymore. The closer you get to the father, the closer you find yourself uh uh, uh, alone, alone. <laughs> but that's actually what the word holy means. People don't know that, you know, the word holy means separated. Yeah, set apart. A lot of people. Well, I grew up thinking that until recently, it means per yeah, yeah, or something like that, and it mm -hmm. don't. You yeah. look up the word holy, and it don't. It don't mean that. Yeah, but all right. So let's go. Forty-nine. After a very little while, I saw a great multitude of men coming. And in the middle of them, a man so tall that he surpassed the tower in height. So here is the second coming of Yehoshua HaMashiach. Some of you guys are going to be surprised by this. And, you know, some of them are going to hit the dislike button when I say this. But you, 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 this is the second coming. The Messiah has already returned. He is here now. He's back, you know. He, he actually dwells inside of us, you know. Um, people are still looking for him outwardly. Like they're turning on their televisions or, or trying to see him on, on YouTube videos or whatever. Um, no, they're really actually supposed to be looking for him inside. And if they look for him on the inside, they will actually find that he has already returned. And that's what it's talking about here when he says... Um, a uh, great multitude of men coming with him. Remember he said he was going to come on a cloud and he's going to have tens of thousands of his angels with him. Mm -hmm. This is what it's talking about. That's the multitude of men that he's talking about is these ten thousands of angels in the middle of the man tall and surpassed the tower. That's the second coming. Okay, hold up a minute. You're telling me that I have the Messiah inside of me, but you're also saying that he's going to come with a great multitude of men. Yeah. I don't understand. He's coming. He, he these 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 people that he's coming with are angelic figures. So you can't see them, just like you can't see uh, the Messiah. But we now have this multitude of angelic figures that are around us. And you you understand the tribulation and what the purpose of these people that's, that's that's here with us is to protect us, to guide us, to kind of like guardian angels that's going to help us through the tribulation. Remember, we can't get through the tribulation on our own. We have to have angelic help. There's going to be people, um, you know, saving lives. There's going to be angels saving lives. There's going to be angels doing all kinds of the stuff. There, there are certain parts of the scripture that says there's going to be times when we're actually going to see their work. We're actually going to see them doing miraculous stuff. Right. You know, um, I guess my mind went back to thinking um, uh, physically uh, when I materially and when I should be thinking spiritually. Yeah. And that 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 is very, very important thought that there is you have to think spiritually you can't think physically like when I told, said a few minutes ago the Messiah has come if you start to think materially you're going to get caught up in the Antichrist stuff you're going to start looking for him to, to make an appearance on television or you're going to start thinking that yeah that, that brick and mortar third temple that they are trying to build over there in Jerusalem has something to do with it and you will find yourself in error you have to understand that he is coming back spiritually you know, what does it say? In spirit and truth. He's coming back in spirit and truth. You know, not materialism and lies is what you're going to find if you try to find him any other place, but inside of your own heart, inside of your own conscience. Okay. Yeah. Number 50. About him were those six who before commanded in the building and all the rest of those who had built that tower and many others of great dignity. And the virgins that kept the tower ran to meet him and kissed him and began to walk near unto him. These are all angelic figures. The six individuals that he's talking about are those archangels, people like Gabriel and Michael and you know, Uriel. Uriel and Phinael and uh, Raphael. These are the, the top the, the top angels that you know are surrounding the Father at all times. They all have different responsibilities and different jobs and such. But these are the six that, that are really in charge of the building of this tower and then it says the rest who had built the tower that includes the multitude of angels right yeah. and then the virgins who kept yeah. the tower yeah and so these individuals as the messiah approaches like i said he's already back these individuals are with him now they are surrounding him now you know 
We just have to understand it spiritually. And I have to stress that because the Bible stresses that. The scripture stresses that. We have to understand this is on a spiritual nature, not material. Not material at all. You're not going to be able to see anything with your eyes. Except the Antichrist. Except the false prophets. Mm. I guess that's why uh, a lot, even the elect will be fooled. Because if you don't think spiritually... Um, you're going to get caught up thinking that he's the Christ. Definitely. Definitely. Are, you're right. There are some elect that would be fooled, and that's probably how. If they you know, if they can't wrap their mind on the spiritual nature of who our Father really is, then they're going to be looking for him materially. 51. But he examined the building with so much care that he handled every stone and struck everyone with a rod which he held in his hand. Yeah. So now... This right here, the way I understand this, and you guys have to have to help me out on some of this stuff, you know, because I'm really, you know, stretching my brain. I'm praying a lot over it, trying to get an understanding of this stuff. But from what I understand and gather here, this is what we have gone through here in the last few decades where, you know, and, and a lot of people will be able to attest to this is where they were living somewhat comfortable or normal. Uh, and I throw my, my, my hand quotes up there, normal lives. And then something happened to them. They fell off. They lost their jobs, lost their, their families, lost their homes, um, um, or something, something happened to them to where, you, where they, they can look back and see something significant happening to them in their life. And this is what this is. That they were struck by the rod. They were struck by the rod. I mean, if you go back to you and I back there in 2013 and 2004 and 12 on the lifestyle that we were living, maybe even 2014, the lifestyle we were living in 2015, we got whacked with the rod. We got whacked hard. Yeah, we got whacked really hard. We went from living a six-figure income income to living a one-figure income. Yeah, one figure is a zero. Yeah, one figure is zero. One figure income. Yeah, $140,000 gross income per year to, you know, it ain't even 144 pennies now. <laughs> but, you know, praise the Lord, you know, it ain't about money. It's a, it, it, and, it's, and it's never really been about money. And that's, the, that's what, you know, has the people tricked up is we're so reliant on money and we even get idolatrous when you think about those are idols and images on that piece of paper that we are worshiping so much when we praising money and all of this we can survive without this stuff and we were just talking about that today mm -hmm. how you know we we've been you know now without an income for you know how many years Almost five. Almost five years. But yet, we don't really have to worry about food. We don't have to worry about clothing. We don't have to really worry about shelter. You know? Yeah, we have a uh, a beautiful home. We have uh, clothing that we probably need to get rid of some of them. And well, we know, have gardens of, of food. Yeah. Now, well, the worldly people will look at our stuff and they're not going to see a beautiful home or, you know, right. anything great and all of this. But, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's not about that stuff. That is all worldly stuff. And we're going to find out in this book that you actually going to have to be stripped of all of that worldly stuff. Yeah, you're going to have to lose it all. And yeah. we, we were stripped of it, you know. Yeah. He, he says what you're not useful if, as long as you have that stuff. But we, we're, we'll get to that in a minute. All right, where we're at. We're on 52. Of which some being so struck turned black as soot. Others were rough. Some looked as if they had cracks in them. Others seemed main. Some neither black nor white. Some looked sharp and agreed not with the other stones. And others were full of spots. So you have these individuals who were sitting in a tower looking all sanctified and, you know, what are the other definitions we just read? Religious and all of that. But then once they get struck... Once they get struck with that rod, remember you you and I were sitting there, you know, thinking we were all right. But once you got struck with that rod and you start losing your possessions and losing your worldly stuff, some of these people will turn bad. Some of them will get mad and angry. And, and what does he say? Some of them turn black. Mm -hmm. Black as soot. Others became rough. Some, some looked as if they, you know, had cracks in them. Some neither black nor white. Some looked sharp. And I wondered if some even blaspheme. 
Well, they turn black. Yeah, those who turn those who turn black as soot. Yeah, they they those are the blasphemers. Now we're not talking about the color of your skin. We're talking about the color of your heart here. But the ones that are black as pitch, those are people who believe in the Father, but they're actually apostates and blasphemers. They are betrayers of the servants. And then the ones that are rough, those are hard learners. Those are the ones who who don't really want to you know listen to anybody explain to them you know the truth, or they don't want to really hear the truth. They want to kind of stick to you know what they have and such like that the ones that are that have cracks in them those are the ones who um double-minded though yeah the, well the double-minded are the ones that are half black and half white right right the ones who have cracks in them the ones who have uh different stuff against each other they're, they're the ones who who have uh um they're slanderous right and mm -hmm. and, and and i'm i'm in memory space right now mm -hmm. see right here when we jump up to verse 66 he starts to explain it he starts explaining that those that are maimed and short, they are uh, they who believed indeed, but still are in great measure full of wickedness. For this cause, they are maimed and not whole. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about the white and round stones. I tell you, I tell you what, um, my notes are failing me right now on who these who these individuals are. So what I'll do is I'll go in and look at it, and I'll put it down in the uh, in the comments or the description. Give give details, give the verses on what, what where these are explained. Mm -hmm. So look for them in the comments down there. Let's go on. Number fifty three. These were the several kinds of those stones which were not found proper in the building, all which the Lord commanded to be taken out of the tower. And lay near it, and other stones to be brought and put into their places. So now understand what's going on here. You can imagine, okay, um, speaking for ourselves, and, and you guys will have your own own examples of this, maybe your own timeline, and own year. But you know, so there you and I were sitting in the sitting in the tower, sitting looking comfortable, thinking everything was all right back in like 2012, and then all of all of a sudden in 2014 we got whacked. You know, with a riff letter from a company saying that we were, you know, you know you, you're basically going to have a reduction in force. We're about to get rid of 10,000 of you, you know, people who, you know, are not so money minded or whatever. And so then you get whacked and you start to lose all of your possessions. You lost your BMW. You lost your gold watch. You lost your $500 shoes. You lost, you know, all of those things that you thought you, you, you had to have. And some of these people became, you, they, 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 even though they, they were uh, white, they, they became black, they became, you know, uh, or they, they became cracked or they became maimed and such. These people were taken out of the tower. They were removed from the tower and then other people are going to be allowed, allowed in. Now, the people that's been in here so far, they, they've came from the mountains. Mm -hmm. But now he's going to take them out and he's going to give the people from the plains a chance who represents, like I said, uh, the, um, the, other, the, other, the other people are going to get a shot. Yeah, yeah. So we hear a lot about that in Third Testament as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we hear about how um, not just one group of per people is oh, yeah. going to be, uh, be, I guess, live after the tribulation, but other people are going to be uh, included. He just didn't come for one group of people. Well, like, you, like what you're referring to is how the word Israel was mistakenly believed to represent a, a certain group of people, when in actually, actuality, the word Israel is a spiritual name, and it represents a multitude of people from all different races. It basically boils down to who are the believers and who are not. Believers today will be the Israelites, whereas the non-believers will be the Gentiles. Right. All right. You ready to go? On? Number 54. And they that built asked him from which of the mountains he would have stones brought to put in the place of those that were laid aside. And he forbade them to bring any from the mountains and commanded that they should take them out of a certain field that was near. Yeah, so now you didn't lost we didn't lost the opportunity now. We we at, at one point, you know, it was about those individuals who, you know, have been with the father for a long time. Um, but now he's gonna go look at the Gentiles now and start giving them a shot. Yeah, he forbade them to uh bring uh, stones from the mountain. Yeah, they, he, he, you missed your opportunity. You know, you, mm -hmm. you should have had, you should have been, you know, should have been working to get in the tower. And we find it out later on 
uh, why it's like that when he starts telling them, okay, those who believe in the Father have a greater responsibilities than those who have never heard of him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the ones who, who believe in him and know about him are really expected to be uh, righteous and expected to uh, abide by his laws. Whereas those who have never heard of him, they, they kind of got a little bit more more um, leeway. leeway. And so that's why now, that's why he forbade them for even going to the mountains anymore. They they out. They, they're done. Mm. Oh, wow. Now we're going to start, you know, go. There's one individual named Scott is, you know, I've been talking to on my, on my, on, on some, of, you know, back and forth for some of the comments. And, you know, he's, he's an atheist, you know, but, you know, he, he doesn't seem to be blasphemous. You know, he, 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 he doesn't have any faith in the word of God and he's quick to say that, but he hasn't blasphemed and then he hasn't betrayed the, the, the servants of God. Meaning he ain't targeted me and started calling me, you know, this and that and the other. So whereas, you know, before he may be considered black, um, once he, uh, gets through these trials or gets, gets in this part of the building of the tower, he may change colors. And then he will be have the opportunity to go into the tower. Okay, yeah, he will be one of those that is gathered out of the plains. Yeah, he'll be one of the ones gathered out of the plains and put in the tower. And you know, that's what that's, you know, that's what people say. You know, there's gonna be people in heaven. You know, people gonna be wondering, how did you get here? <laughs> yeah, I oh, wait, wasn't well, you? Yeah, and it's because of the way this tower is being built. Fifty-five. So they digged in the field and found many bright square stones. And some also that were round. Howbeit, all that were found in the field were taken away and carried through the gate by those virgins. And those of them that were square were fitted and put into the places of those that were pulled out. Yeah. Now this field, we're gonna find out. This is a certain. This is a certain plain here that he's talking about. A certain field. They said the base of a certain mountain. And all of the ones that are found at the base of this mountain are, you know, they're they're all bright. They're all white. They're all men in righteousness. But they're all gonna have the opportunity to go into the tower. Um. But notice they have to be carried by the virgins. Uh, what does it say? Some of them are round, which you're going to find out in a minute what that means. Um, but they're going to be replaced. They're going to replace those that are that are pulled out. So going back to our own, using our own story as an example, there was sometimes along this walk that, you know, it was doubtful whether or not we would remain in this tower. You know, at some point it was like we had actually been kicked out because, you know, things got really rough. You know, and, you know, those those wicked women, you know, became, you know, really beautiful, you know, to us for a while. And, you know, it, it was at some point, you know, we started to feel them dragging us back to, you know, back to back to that bad place. Yeah, the um, there was there said started to become anger. There started to become uh, pride, uh, uh, foolishness, a lot of things that uh, was being portrayed by us that was that does appear to have been, take us back to uh yeah and and why well, i used to think about that you know because we just moved back when when we got struck with the rod back in 2014 we we decided to move back here to this town that we live in now and then the persecution started and you know at one point i remember telling you it was like these people around here broke me it was like mm-hmm. they broke me because I had never been a hateful person. I had never been a slanderous person. I had never, you know, been a person that held grudges and all of the, all of that. But all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you know, it was like there was so much going on that I, you know, found myself becoming a, a, a bad person. Yeah, yeah. Things, our personalities uh, did seem to change. And that was that whacking. That's what he talked about when he inve- he examined each one of the stones and whacked. Them. So he gave he gave us the opportunity to find out if we really were hateful people or not. Yeah, I'm sitting here, sitting here listening and um, thinking about how some of the stones, some of the people went into the tower and they were placed by by the virgins into the tower. But when the Messiah came, he does the final look over, and those that the, got through the virgin, I guess they got past the virgin. He said, "No, uh, uh-uh. uh." Yeah. They got to come out, too. They got to come out, too. Yeah. And I don't know if we was in that group that, you know, had, you know, stuck, snuck our way in there or whatever. But, you know, they got to come out. Every, everybody who who does not take on the 12 virgins. And we'll jump back over here 
um, and show you who, who they are again. But everybody who does not put on the virtues of these 12 individuals will be removed. And it means every one of them. If, I mean, you could, you could have 11 of them right and get one of them wrong. And that one, like if you don't, if you don't have truth. If you if, if you can have all eleven, but if you don't have truth, that lion spirit is gonna grab a hold of you and take you back to lion land. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be kicked out of the tower. You have to have all twelve of them. Right. Or else you're gonna be pulled out. Or or they're gonna come and pull you back out. And you know, the what what did you say in the other one? They're gonna be happy about it. They're gonna be singing <laughs> as they drag you back to you know, sadness land or malice land or foolishness land. Yeah, and another thing you said was, you know, we we'll say that we would often say that, um, you know, we moved back here uh, because we got rifted or because there was a, uh, a reduction. I think we're going to start saying that uh, we were struck by the rod. <laughs> yeah, we were definitely struck by the rod. You know, we got whacked, you know, and, you know, all right, let's go on to verse 56. But the round ones were not put into the building because they were hard, and it would have required too much time to cut them, but they were placed about the tower, as if they should hereafter be cut square and put into the buildings, for they were very white. Okay, now, remember being, being white uh, represents righteousness, so these people that were taken out were, were all uh, righteous and holy people, people who, who wanted to have, wanted to be with the Father anyway, but some of them were round, and you remember what round means? No, I was wondering what you were going to tell me. That roundness, that what makes them round is worldly riches. Mm. Those worldly riches, those right. those those things that those things of the world that are actually getting in the way of them becoming useful in the tower. And so those things are those things have to be stripped away. Materialism. Materialistic stuff, they have to be stripped away, you know? At one point, what what we had, we we had Porsches, we had you know, uh, big houses, we had multiple lands all over the country, mm -hmm. and you know we had a lot, we had a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you know, but what does he say? For when we had that stuff, we were not useful. And you look back, yeah, we wasn't doing anything, as far as the ministry was concerned. We was just living and chilling, you know. Yeah. But now that that stuff has been stripped away from us. It's like the only thing now we have is the ministry. Yeah. And so now we have become useful. Yeah, we're very dependent on the Father, whereas before we were dependent on if that check was going to come in. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, if that check didn't come in, you know, we go down to the bank. What, what, I think my, my credit score was like 850 or whatever. You know, I go to the bank and get anything I want. You know, I didn't have to, you know, wait on him. I can pray. But if he didn't come fast enough, you know, I'll just go take a loan out and get whatever I wanted. Mm hmm So, yeah. <laughs> Number 57, when he who was chief in dignity and the Lord of the whole tower saw this, he called to him the shepherd that was with me and gave him the stones that were rejected and laid about the tower and said unto him, cleanse these stones with all care and fit them into the building of the tower that they may agree with the rest. But those that will not suit with the rest cast far away from off the tower. Now you about to go talk to the angel of punishment. Oh yeah. Now this. <laughs> then, oh then, yeah. Now you about to go talk to the angel of punishment, who who you know you're gonna go through uh, uh, thorns and thistles for a little while, which represents riches and you know many business affairs. Basically gonna put you in financial turmoil and financial hardship. Strip this worldly stuff away from you is what he's talking about. And then after you've done with the angel of of uh, repent, I mean the angel of punishment for a while. Then you get in back into the hands of the angel of repentance, who is the top dog. He, he's kind of over the angel of punishment. You get in his hands, and then, you know, that's when you realize the error, and you start to become repentant, and you start to, you know, work your way back to who you're supposed to be. That's what he means by cleansed. Yeah, the angel of punishment is a righteous angel, but he, he has a job to do. He's serious now. He ain't no joke. Uriel is no joke. 
You know, he has, he, unlike Michael, I mean, Michael, he's the lawgiver. He has his responsibility. Gabriel is over our, you know, I, I need to study Gabriel more, but he's kind of over our consciousness awareness. He's, he's the one that makes us understand stuff. He's the one in charge of our dreams and stuff. But Uriel, you know, Raphael, he's over, he's over our health and, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, but Uriel, he, he is the angel of punishment and he is very serious about his job. He, he's over our, our repentance and, you know, I said punishment. He's, he's the angel of repentance. He is over, you know, our, he is over repentance and in charge of it. And he's very serious about his job. He's a very tough angel to deal with. Number 58. When he had thus commanded him, he departed. With all those that came with him to the tower, but those virgins stood still about the tower to keep it. All right. So now here's another break in the six in the building. Seems like right. Because yeah, because after he uh, has given him instructions as to what to do with the stones that were fit for the tower and those that were not, he's about to depart. But he leaves the virgins there to uh, to continue to keep the tower. Who, who is this that's about to part? This is the, the Messiah, the, the venerable angel Messiah. OK. All right. So this is another break in the in, in the period there where, you know, so um, looking back on our study, looking back on using our own life and as an example. Um, so we've been put in the in the hands of the angel of repentance back then in 2014 and since then we've been getting cleansed by this angel whereas the the messiah has kind of gone off a little bit and you know letting us get out letting our letting us get our lives straight yeah but he's leaving the uh leaving the virgins um to take care of the, the stones, I guess. Yeah, because, you know, these, these virgins have to stay with us. If they ever leave us, we are going to be in trouble if they ever go away. Yeah, and uh, I think in, in commands where they tell Hermas that they want to stay, but uh, you have to make it a suitable living place for them to live. Yeah, they're not going to hang around in an environment that, you know, is uncomfortable for them. They're quick to leave, you know. If any type of hatred, what are some other wicked ones down there? Uh, uh, any type of Malice, infidelity, love, yeah, yeah perfidiousness, any of those things, anger, any of those things come, and those angels are going to go away quick. They're going, but it makes sense. If you get angry, cheerfulness is gone. Cheerfulness is going to run. If you become prideful, then concord and harmony quick. And I know about that one. Hatred, love goes away. Mm -hmm. You, you know. You, you might you'd say, well, you know, it, you think, well, you know, I only hate certain people. Uh, uh, no, the the love for those, the the love for your loved ones is going to go away too. You know, you ain't going to be able to say, I just love those that love me. You're going to have to love everybody. Mhm. Mm yeah. Fifty nine. And I said unto the shepherd, How can these stones, seeing that they have been rejected, return into the building of this tower? He replied. I will cut off the greatest part of these stones and will add them to the building and they will agree with the rest. Yeah, so you're going to be stripped of your stuff. You're going to be stripped of. And see, this is why a lot of people don't want to have nothing to do with the father. I, I remember, I like to call people's names out, but my mom told me at one point that, you know, she didn't want to have, she didn't want to understand she didn't want to hear what I was saying because she didn't want to lose her stuff and at the point I didn't really understand what she was saying it didn't make sense to me like why would you lose your stuff if you you'd start reading the Bible and adhering to the commandments and the rules and such but you know apparently she was smarter than I am because that's <laughs> part of it you yeah. get stripped of your stuff and so there's a lot of people that want nothing to do with the commandments the rules the statutes the precepts and such because they're afraid they're going to lose their possessions their their nice cars and houses and stuff yeah you know uh especially when the church preaches otherwise the church preaches that you can have anything you basically want if you uh, are faithful you love the father you keep the ten commandments and all that but you know it, it's kind of hard um following the father's rules and still have a whole lot of stuff yes. yeah yeah and, and what, what they're saying is, is they're getting it out of the bible remember in one part we talked about how satan mixes in you know the truth with the lies 
And so it is true. At, at one point, we'll, we'll get to the place where anything we even think about, the Father is going to give it to us. You know, it, he, it says that in the scripture, even before we can get the prayer out of our mouths, the angels are going to be coming and delivering that stuff. But that they're taking it out of context. They're taking it out of the dispensation. They're actually, you know, bringing those promises that are set for post tribulation, the kingdom of heaven and applying them to us now, which they don't apply to us now. You, you, you we're not supposed to have these possessions and stuff now. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sad about how, you know, I used to think uh, when I was part of the church, how, you know, I could just have anything I want. And when I didn't get them, you know, I sort of uh, blame the father as to why why wasn't I getting him? I was I thought I was doing the right thing, but um, you just can't have all of this stuff and serve him faithfully. Well, the, the thing is, as we go into this tribulation, we, we really have to have total faith in him. You know, and if we it's hard to have faith in him when we have all of these, you know, spending power and credit cards and, you know, and all of these different uh, ways to get stuff, you know, a refrigerator full of food and all of this. It's, it's, it's really tough to put full faith in him when, you know, it seems like, you know, we, every, it seems like the world is giving us everything that we want. But. If we can get past this hump, if you can get past the tribulation, then you, once you get to the other side, yeah, you're going to get everything you want. Everything you ask for, he's supposed to give it to you. So, Coach, are you telling us that I cannot truly serve the Father if I have everything that I want here, if I have a, a bank account full of money, if I have, you know, a big three-story house, if I have the BMW, the Porsche, the, uh, the, the, the nice car and all that other stuff, I can't faithfully serve him? Absolutely not. I'm saying that absolutely <laughs> not. Um, the thing, uh, because the word doesn't say that. He, the Father, it's in the Third Testament of the Bible, he, he explains to us that he doesn't have a problem with us having stuff. He wants us to have stuff. The problem is that it gets in the way of our servant to him. You know, if we could, there, there are plenty of people out there who will continue to have their stuff. You know, they, they, they will continue with the with their bank accounts and such. But it is because those people are able to recognize who the father is, stay faithful to him, stay, stay and, you know, and be generous and give, you know, whereas the rest of us, you know, it clouds our minds and it gets us in trouble. Yeah, I can only go by what happened to us because we were I thought we were generous, uh, but yet and still, it still clouded our mind. It's just, I mean, it's just night and day how our lives are now compared to what it was. Well, before. we weren't keeping the rules. We weren't studying the Bible. We weren't even reading the Bible that much or anything. And, you know, we wasn't, you know, praying. You know, our prayers were very weak and didn't, you know, have any force at all because, you know, you know, what was you praying for? You was praying for BMWs and you was praying, <laughs> you know, for, for your loan application to be to be accepted or whatever. And, you know, so, but that's only certain people. Going back to your question, I'm going to say it again. No, there are other people who can. I wouldn't suggest you try it. <laughs> but there are other people who can uh, uh, be within be within the, the, the Father's will, but yet have you know have their possessions and i say that only but i don't know of any real life examples i just say that because the scripture says it. Mm. and you know hope you know prayfully i go pull out those verses and, and put them down there too there are people that can do it the majority of us can't the majority of us are going to have to be stripped mm -hmm. yeah okay number 60 and i said sir how will they be able to fill the same place when they shall be so much cut away. He answered, They that shall be found too little shall be put into the middle of the building, and the greater shall be placed without and keep them in. Yeah. So those who who, who are, like you said a few minutes ago, it's, it's like some of them will be hard to be cut. Well, those of us that are tougher to be cut, you know, more more chiseling had to be done. We're going to end up being smaller, tinier stones, even though we're still going to be suitable for the tower. So much of us is going to have to be removed that we're going to have to be put in the middle of the tower. And like we said in the last class, we're going to have to be them teeny tiny rocks that, you know, form the middle of the tower. Whereas, you know, those who were quick to get rid of their stuff, you know, wasn't, didn't have to be chiseled, you know, so much. Those are going to, you know, be some of the... Uh, the bigger blocks on the outside of the tower. 
Yeah, they're going to be some of the supporting stones, I guess. Supporting stones, yeah. Mm -hmm. Number 61. When he had said thus unto me, he added, Let us go, and after three days we will return, and will put these stones, being cleansed, into the tower. Here go, here come three years right here. In three days, he's talking about three years. Number 62. For all these that are about the tower must be cleansed, lest the master of the house chance to come upon the sudden, and find those which were about the tower unclean. And be so exasperated that these stones should never be put into the building of this tower. And I shall be looked upon to have been unmindful of my master's command. So this is the angel of repentance. He is serious about his work here. And he's telling Hermes, we're going to have to get this done. We're going to have to make sure these people are clean before the Messiah comes back and starts to inspect this tower again. You know, he ain't going to be found, you know, uh, unattentive of his work. Right. He's going to make him look bad if... Uh some of those stones are left in there unclean. Yeah. Number 63. When therefore we came after three days to the tower, he said unto me, Let us examine all these stones, and let us see which of them may go into the building. I answered, Sir, let us see. All right. So now the three years are up. These people have have uh, been whacked. They're three years. They've gone into the hands of the angels of punishment. They've been cleansed. And so now he's going to come back and he's going to examine the stones again to see if they can be put back or be useful for the tower at all. You know, the father is serious about this tower. How many times has has these people? So this is what makes the third time that these people are going to be inspected for this tower. Yeah, the third time. This is, I mean, he's extremely serious about those that are making, and you have to understand why. We're talking about people who are going to live in the kingdom of heaven, and he's not going to have anybody there that's going to have hate in their heart because hate is contagious. Mm -hmm. Like we said earlier, you know, I came down this road, you know, thinking I was a good person, but then when I got around some hateful people and some slanderous people and some backbiting people, I became like that. You know? Yeah. Even me. To even me became like that. So if anybody slips through and gets through this tribulation and, you know, finds themselves on the other side of this tribulation with unfaithfulness in their heart, you know, jump back over to the virgins. If they have any of these bad things that want to be pleasurable or have infidelity or sadness in their heart, they're going to taint other people. Imagine how easy it is for a sad person to cause people around them to be sad. Or a lustful person to, uh, you know, around to cause other people to be lustful. So, you know, he's going to make sure that, uh-uh, nobody's going to get through that ain't supposed to get through. The angel of repentance is definitely going to make sure that nobody enters this tower that's going to, well, he's not going to have any uh, stones that's out of shape, out the, the wrong shape. No, he's going to cause the whole thing, to, it can cause, it can mess the whole tower up. You know, you you and this this ain't a this ain't this is a, a block wall. This wall is made out of rocks. If you have any rock any any weak rock on there, you know, it's it can cause the rest of the tower to fall. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, ain't, ain't nothing get through. Every rock is gonna be going to be solid. Mm -hmm. No cracks, no nothing. Alrighty, um, I think we're gonna stop there. So what are some of the so what are some of the points that we learned from this? We learned for one, I learned that. That the uh, the virgins are there to guard us. If yeah. we if we get into those the tower and we have these virgins, you know, well taken care of. We've studied them. We're we're living them. They're part of your life. Yeah, they're part of our life. That they will guard and protect us. Um, we just have to uh, continue um, making them a part of our life and do nothing that will will will. Well, you have to reject the other ones. You have to you have to strongly reject those other ladies. Whenever you see that sadness lady coming, you got to run. You got to be like, no, I want nothing to do with sadness. I want nothing to do with foolishness or pride or hatred. And so, yeah. And so that, that that's that's important for these to stay around so that, you know, so, you know, truth is a is a is a big part of our life. So that if we ever hear a lie, it will become offensive to us and something detestable and something we want nothing to do with. Yeah, yeah, but these, they are so, so, 
desirable. <laughs> the other ones? Oh yeah, they're they're beautiful. These ladies over here, what the Bible describes them as beautiful. Yeah, every no nobody wants to um, nobody wants to be picked on. Nobody wants to to um, uh, be humble. Nobody, you know, you want to fight. You want to you want to stand up for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You you, you don't want to be meek. You want you want to fight back. You know, and and so but you know you can't. Yeah, you want to look important. Thinking about pride, you want to look important. You want to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, look, look how goofy the cheerful guy looks like. He, he looks kind of goofy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, all the time. You know what I'm saying. And and so I remember at 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 at, at, at my last job, the one we're talking about, you know, been one talking about. I remember they came in my office one day and they told me that you know that. It seemed like nothing bothered me. Like, you know, all of the stuff was going on in the plant. Like, you know, it seemed like, you know, some of that stuff should have been disturbing me or, you know, upsetting me. And I tried to explain this book to this lady. I, of course, I hadn't read it in a long time, but, you know, this stuff was really on my heart. And I'm trying to explain to him, no, this ain't the way you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be like that. And but she didn't understand. She was like my 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 pseudo supervisor at the time. They kind of put her over me or something like that. Um. But she didn't understand. She thought, uh-uh, you're supposed to get mad. You supposed, Something going on, you're supposed to get mad. You're supposed to get angry. You know, blow up in a meeting or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's, that's what they ex people expect you to be. People expect you to be like that. They don't expect you to be cheerful. You know? They, you know? Well, I want to thank you guys for sticking around uh, and watching our class. Um, if you got something out of it, go ahead and hit that like button. If you aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button because we're going to be putting out these classes until we get to the end. Lord willing, we're going, to, we're going to finish out this chapter here. We've already done commands. We've already done the first similitudes, and we're going to finish up with, the, with um, similitude 9 here, and we'll finish out uh, Hermes. And we do put out other content as well. Uh, you can check our channel. We do put out a, a variety of videos there. Um, so go ahead and hit that bell button hit that like button hit that and um leave a comment below and uh most important thing guys is to keep praying for us um and we'll keep praying for you